And <laughs> this song, jokingly, ended up being one of the biggest songs in the country, okay? So, I actually knew this song through Osoro because I thought he was making a bad joke. You know, Osoro means some uh, very weird jokes. So, he was like... Niki kukuna back. You remember what you said, Osoro? Utani kuna front. Niki kukuna back, utani kuna front. And I was like, what are you, what are you trying to say? And so he plays me this song, and I'm like, why would this be? A and I go to a party and a concert, and people are just like, wanajikuna, kila mtu, wakona, wakona kupe, sielewi, unajikuna, kuna, kuna. And it's one of the biggest jams, by the way, in the country. So, I mean, you went to a bash, walikuwa wanajikuna front, wengine wakikuna back. Walikuwa wanajikuna front na back, Osoro. When I'm being bash, ilikuwa imishikaje? Ayo, ilishika. No, ni watu walishikwa. Oh, sorry. Anyway, the hashtag is here, Mina, at the Trend Live. We would love to read your messages coming through on Twitter, on Facebook, and on Instagram. So do let us know where it is that you are watching the show from. My guest is a 22-year-old artist. She is the one that we are ending the show with tonight okay now she majors in abstract portrait and her artwork is created to represent and advocate for african and black women and here she is with me tomi zuka welcome to the trend tomi thank you, thank you. can we please talk about your hair girl <laughs> it is giving me so much life mm -hmm. you look so good it's so cool you different unique Thank you. Uh, there was a guest that was on Dr. Kingori's show, and then mm -hmm. when you came on, I was like, mm -hmm. wait, were you just not on Kingori? You were like, no, it's no, not me. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to the show. Thank you. So is the hair heavy? No. No. It's not heavy? No, it's not heavy. Okay. Mm -hmm. So what, what, how did you decide this is like the style that I want to do? Um, okay, for <clears throat> a long time, I, okay, I like basically uh, big hairstyles, like really shouting hairstyles and all of that so most of the times i do like um large braids or large large like forelocks and all of that um then i discovered somebody who was doing these and i contacted them because they're more long term they can stay you can just keep on like renewing and extending them and i feel like they're very artistic so they you really are. Yeah. You look very much like an artist. So how long <laughs> have you had the braids? Um, the dreads, rather, um, I should call them. <laughs> the four locks. Um, for about I, almost a year now. Almost a year. Mm -hmm. And you don't know when you're going to take them off? Nope. Or maybe you could just keep them. Mm -hmm. I feel like it really suits you. Yeah, thank you. It really does suit you. This is really interesting. Thank I you. really, really like it. <laughs> okay. Now, how long have you been an artist? Um, for... Almost all my life, yeah. Cause I, I started painting when I was in primary school, and um, <clears throat> from there I just kept on nurturing my talent and just doing more practicing. Um, when I went to high school, I did art as a subject, so I just kept on like improving my skills. Mm. Mm -hmm. And here we are now, where we've reached this stage, <laughs> and it looks pretty cool. Thank you. But I remember, you know. As I was looking at your artwork mm -hmm. and I was looking, you know, at your name, mm -hmm. I didn't think you were Kenyan initially. Oh. I was like, wait, Tommy who again? Tommy mm -hmm. so I was like, that doesn't sound Kenyan to me. And then I went on to research about the name mm -hmm. and it turns out there is some story to it. So tell us about <laughs> Tommy. Uh, well, my name was given to me by my dad who had a best friend who was named Tomizuka Hisako. So he gave me the two names. Um, he had a Japanese best friend named Tomizuka Hisako. So I think he named me in like honor of the best He's friend. Best friend. Thing. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. that makes sense. Mm -hmm. I see that. Mm -hmm. Remember, Cardi B was talking about how they got their names, mm -hmm. her and her sister, mm -hmm. and it was because the dads do like Tennessee, and oh. then do <laughs> like so the dads really do, do yeah. decide. Mm -hmm. Have you? Did you ever meet his best friend? No. What he passed on? No, I'm not sure if he passed Aww. on. I think it's a she. It's so, a she. Yeah. I don't think she passed on. I, I think they just maybe grew apart and yeah oh mm -hmm. but it's such a cool name thank you it is such a such a cool name thank so you. you did 16 portraits mm -hmm. how long did that take you uh it took me about four weeks uh because um when initially when i started doing the paintings 
um, I wasn't I, I wasn't headed in a particular direction. I was just like um, painting because you know I love painting. So um, I also paint women like a lot of women like I think I paint women only till like for now up to now I think I've just been painting women and women only so um, I had about the 16 days of activism against um, gender-based violence and I felt like it would be a good opportunity for me to use my artwork to advocate for that and to um, talk about uh, women and women's beautiful lives and um, oppression of women and women being let free and all of that so um, I decided to do 16 paintings in honor of each day for the activism yeah to create mm -hmm. more awareness mm -hmm. now I know I don't know if you were watching the mm -hmm. interview that we had before mm -hmm. regarding the movie Masi mm -hmm. but it speaks about the same thing because mm -hmm. it talks about sexual gender-based violence mm -hmm. which is a much more common occurrence than we would love to admit yeah. it happens every few seconds mm -hmm. statistics show yeah. um, but yet we are pretending to be oblivious. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure what society is doing with it, but we act as though it's not as rampant, that it's not an on ongoing endemic. Like this is the pandemic. Mm -hmm. This is a big, big problem and it needs to be addressed. Yeah. But before we even got to the 16 days of activism, this mm -hmm. is something that you were doing previously. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what what got you, what drew you towards African women other than the fact that we are powerful, strong uh. and beautiful? <laughs> what got you to, you know, specifically working on these portraits? Um uh okay, so <clears throat> um I feel like a lot of women are most of us are not represented. Yeah. We are very underappreciated as well. So I felt like deciding to be an artist who I mean uh, in future I might venture out into drawing like the other gender but for now um, I feel like I felt like um, this would be a way of empowering women having um, paintings about women and women only women's stories mm -hmm. women's lives would be a very empowering thing for women everywhere Mm. So it would be as a representation for some of the people who cannot um, fight for themselves, some, some of them who cannot um, speak up for themselves. So that's why I've always been bet on painting and drawing women. It's a way of expressing how powerful we are. Yeah. Yeah. Because we are very powerful. Mm -hmm. So for the people who don't know what 16 days of activism is all about, what mm -hmm. can you tell them? Um, 16 days of activism, This, these are um, 16 days where um, we talk about how women are um, abused, generally oppressed, um, looked down upon, denied opportunities, not able to do um, what a man can do, per se. Um, however, it's 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 a day. It's a time where we just highlight it the most. It doesn't end um, after these 16 days. It doesn't. Um, it goes on till the 16 days again. It, it's it's just it's a continuous conversation which will never end until women get what they deserve. Till yeah. women are not oppressed anymore. It's gonna be a continuous conversation. So yes. this is just a time in the year when we highlight all of that. However, it goes on after the 16 days. Yeah. Yeah. Where women are hard. Mm -hmm. Yes, women are hard and their issues are being taken into account. Mm -hmm. Because I don't know why we act as though, like, uh, isn't it just a that you call me? I don't know how they, they make it look like it's such familial, domestic issues yeah. that should never get, like, you know, national mm -hmm. um, reach. It just doesn't make any sense to me. Yeah. Now, you work on your paintings. I understand some of the pieces. Mm -hmm. you go about eight hours interrupted mm -hmm. is it some of them yeah most of them oh actually. most of them yeah eight hours mm -hmm. like you don't no I'll not stand I, I might I mean somebody might get me a glass of water or maybe a cup of tea or coffee but I'll never really stand up because my friends would even call me and ask me oh Lisa hi uh, what are you up to today and I'd be like oh, I'm painting and they just know okay Okay, oh, that's a whole painting. day thing. Yeah. Yeah. She's mm -hmm. not going to 
she yeah. doesn't want to stop. Eight hours is long, though. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what? Yeah, because I feel like um, if I break my concentration, what I want to not come out. Yeah, so I, I stay concentrated for those eight hours or however long it might need to take. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, and something very different. Well, actually, it's not different, but something very similar with you and other artists, mm -hmm. and this is globally, is that you don't explain your paintings. Like, mm -hmm. you've just said, oh, you know, if I don't do it like eight hours or however many hours cons co consecutively, mm -hmm. continuously, mm -hmm. I will lose track and the vision will not be there. But mm -hmm. that's just your vision. Mm -hmm. And you said that, you know, your paintings are abstract, mm -hmm. meaning that it's based on interpretation. So yes. you allow your audience or people who are looking at the painting to tell you what they think about it. Because yes. it's, it's objective. Yeah, yeah, I do. I do. <laughs> oh, yeah, I do a lot because um, I, when it comes to abstract art or just art in general, I feel like um, people tend to interpret things differently. And as long as it's a good interpretation, a positive interpretation, I feel like it can work for you. So I would sometimes give like a backstory of why I did the painting or what I thought of when I was doing the painting. However, I would mostly do that after somebody has given their own interpretation, looked at it and said, mm, I feel like this gives me this kind of vibe. I feel like this speaks to me in this type of way. Then if they ask for my interpretation, then I'll talk to them and tell them that, oh yeah, when I did this, I thought of this. I, I wanted to depict this. I wanted to express this and yeah. Mm. Mm -hmm. I mean, they tell you a different story from what you thought you were painting mm -hmm. and they're like oh you know when i saw this i saw my mom and mm -hmm. i feel like yeah if that's what you saw mm -hmm. that's what you saw if that's what you thought the painting was saying mm -hmm. to you then <laughs> i guess that's okay um so your parents have been very supportive mm -hmm. of this yeah so very. they were like your first fan yeah how <laughs> impressed are they now that it's they are very impressed very very impressed because um my mom um was my mom and my dad, basically, they were very, very supportive. They'd always like um, look for ways to help me learn and help me like um, uh, get more professional, get more. Um, basically, they'd just be there. They'd look for teachers if they needed to. They would look for materials. They would look for canvases, boards, and all of that because I create my own canvases at home they would just buy me materials like um, the fabric and the wood itself. And I'd create, I'd stretch my own canvas. Are you serious? Yeah. What? Mm-hmm. Wow. <laughs> what? What do you yeah. mean stretch your own canvas? Mm -hmm. I didn't even know you could do that. Yeah, you can. Just at home. I mean, I know you could do that. People are selling them. <laughs> it's just that, are they watching right now? Yeah. They are, hi mom, hi dad. <laughs> what do you want to tell them? Uh, I want to tell them I'm very, very thankful for everything they've given me. Look at me. the camera and tell them. Where Look at the, the camera, camera tell me. Which camera? That camera. Yes, okay. that Mom and dad, thank you so much for giving me the support till now, till date, till this second. Thank you for believing in me because if you did not, I, I don't know where I'd be. If it wasn't for you guys, I, I would not have gone this far. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, thank you so much, mom and dad. <laughs> it's such, you know, I, I think a lot of people don't understand, but when it comes to the creative arts, mm -hmm. the support of the parents yeah. is so big. It's mm -hmm. so, so big because it takes so long before you can make money and mm -hmm. it takes so long before you get notoriety. It takes so mm -hmm. long before you land interviews, mm -hmm. uh, before you get a team and yeah. you have so many, you know, you have enough help to organize your mm -hmm. brand and help you put it out there so yeah. for them to see it with you and see how far the vision and the brand could go mm. i think is just so encouraging so thank you so much mom and dad honestly um <laughs> and for so many other painters and artists who want to get into this field and they're not as confident they're very self-conscious mm -hmm. what do you tell them Tommy? <sighs> but just go for it because um you you need to push yourself art is something it has no um i don't think art has no limit it has no limitations there's no better piece of art there's no 
there's no best piece. You just have to keep on practicing every day and every day because that's the only thing that gets you like. Because about two, two, three years ago, I wasn't like this. But painting every day, doing something every single day, it gets, it gets you there. So mm. you, you don't necessarily need a teacher. Some people, because some people tend to ask me like, um, did you go to school for this? Um, did you need a teacher and for how long? And you don't really, you just need to practice every single day because that's how you perfect your skills. So for anybody who wants to venture into artwork, it's a great field. They should definitely go for it. Yeah, they should mm -hmm. definitely try it out and do it for themselves. Yeah. This is pretty, pretty cool. What do you wish you knew when you were starting out that would have um. helped you and saved you a whole lot? <laughs> Um, first of all, I wish I wish I knew I could create my own canvases because at the beginning, you know, these canvases are very expensive. Yeah. They're very expensive. If you go to textbook center or, you know, the places where they sell canvases, it's a whole lot of money. So if you can learn that skill of being able to create your own materials and all of that, it's good. And also, um, mixing of colors i learned i learned when i was doing um a levels from my teach my art teacher then that you only need three colors to make like all the colors existing in the world because i mean you can make anything out of like yellow red and blue you can create all colors that are existing so it saved me a lot because many artists tend to buy like all every colors. single color <laughs> yeah. yeah and <laughs> sometimes it's expensive because paint is really expensive yeah so you can't like every time you can't you, you might be on a budget and those three colors they really save because you can create every single color so i feel like people should pay more attention to that yeah and get to learn these um skills that seem useless because they're not useless yeah, yeah. they're not and mm -hmm. we learned that in arts in mm -hmm. primary school in case you didn't do it then well come on <laughs> primary <laughs> colors like we learned how to mix them and make mm -hmm. the color come on so you said yellow red blue yeah okay so there you go you mm -hmm. don't have to buy and then you buy purple yeah. and you buy mauve Green. and you buy pink like mm -hmm. what are you doing what are you doing yeah. thank you so much for coming through you. you are such a wonderful soul i could thank like as so i'm much. talking to you mm -hmm. i'm like i am talking to an artist <laughs> okay yeah. picasso i love it thank you. Ciao, Bella. she is so good please so can people buy your painting yes the in fact, um, I'm having an exhibition. Oops, it's oops. okay. It happens to me <laughs> all, all the time. time. Uh -huh. I'm having an exhibition on the 10th of December. Um, I'm gonna give the details on the venue and timings and everything, but mark the date 10th of December. I'll be having an exhibition of all the 16 paintings, and you can purchase them. You can come see them if you're not able to purchase. Um, there'll be a lot of activity going on and. I'm also very thankful for um, FEMNET, which is an organization which has been uh, working with me. It's a women support organization. They support African women. And I'm so thankful to Memory for like helping me and giving me insights and advice and all of that. So yeah, just all mark right. the date. Time. Okay. <laughs> this is pretty cool. This is pretty cool, man. This okay. is Tommy Zuka. What a cool name. Thank you. Um, and she is just so talented. We, we, this is the, when you guys are looking for like diversity in arts, like this is what we're talking about. This is pretty cool. Mm -hmm. So good night to mom and dad because you know they're still watching. They were waiting so that they can go to bed. Uh -huh. <laughs> but yes. <laughs> All right. So now uh, Osoro. I, I know you said you're a painter. Is mm. this what you said you could do? I mean, uh, you yeah. know, um, the only thing...